So this week's video is gonna be a little different than past videos as I'm not gonna review any particular product, but I'm gonna talk about an adventure trip that I went on with uh, eight of us total riding adventure bikes. One guy was on kind of the dual sport Tenere 700, but we had an awesome trip. Uh, this video to follow here is the highlights of that trip, and I'm going to just kind of go through it and uh, just narrate it as we go through. Here's the bike. As you can see, it's all cleaned up from the trip and it looks great still. I'm happy to say I had no problems with the bike whatsoever. Um, it held up great. Oh, let me touch on one item I did pick up right before this trip, and that is this inflatable seat cushion. I saw it on Amazon. Uh, it's not one of the, the name brand ones that cost a lot of money. I think this thing was, was $30 or less, and I put just a small amount of air in it, uh, the more air you put in there, I think makes it pretty hard and uncomfortable with, with it maybe inflated 30%. It actually felt pretty good. It took a little getting used to because, you know, if you push all your weight on one side, the other side goes up. But I found it to be pretty comfortable and fun. I uh, loved having it on there. I kept it on for the whole trip. Just took it off when I got home to wash the bike. The tank bag, another thing I loved. It made it super convenient to get in and out of. I carried my drone in there, which wasn't able to fly much because of the wind but also there's a little pouch on the back where I stuck my gloves all the time to keep them from flying away as I got off the bike. If I had to pick a favorite component for the trip other than my bike, I would say this Cardo Pack Talk Black. So I know they make different versions of the Pack Talk. I think any of them would work great, but seven out of eight riders were on the Pack Talk which has mesh connectability, meaning we, we were all connected all the time. If you went out of range and came back, it reconnected automatically. It really worked great and kept the whole trip very entertaining as we talked to each other. One more thing I wanted to touch on, I knew there was rain forecasted for this trip. So I stopped by Cycle Gear, got one of these uh, built rain jackets. And it's a super large size, like a 4X. So it was actually able to fit over my regular Tourmaster riding jacket. And it worked great. I'm really glad I got it. It blocked the wind so well. All right, let's do Mr. Rogers here and, and hang my sweater up. Okay, so let's head into the video that I shared on Facebook in the Norden America Facebook group. Only I'm going to remove the music I had to it. And I'm just going to talk over it and kind of explain the highlights of the trip. So what we're doing here is we're riding in Utah. We left out of Torrey, Utah. Uh, here's a picture of me. We didn't ride our bikes down. We trailered our bikes down, which... Do what's comfortable for you. That's what I found out here. It's not everyone enjoyed riding through the, the toughest stuff. We all enjoyed eating. Boy, if you're ever in that area, try Capital Burger. They were delicious. Like I said, I'm glad I got that raincoat because yeah. here you can see we experienced some real hail that was hitting us. We also rode in rain. This was one of my favorite stops here called the Singing Canyon. Um, we didn't think we were gonna make it there because of the rain, but we went back and actually got to it. We didn't get all the way down the Burr Trail like we wanted to. I think eating food has got to be a fun part of any trip, so do that a lot. Here we went out to the Temple of the Sun and the Moon. This is in Capitol Reef uh, State Park area. It was a nice ride out there um, on the way. We also went to this area for that jump. I got complete air off the ground with the Norden. Uh, this is called Swing Arm City. And this here, we're riding kind of the top of the peak along these, these strange material that wasn't sand, but had good traction in it. Uh, here's another stop where it was a big overview point. It's amazing how far you can see out there. I'm back here to Swing Arm City again. I'm gonna try my hand at one of these up and over kind of swoop things and I over accelerated and ended up going over the edge there and then found a really rough spot. Here's the Tenere 700. We had a chance to do a little water crossing one day and uh, most people said, nope, not gonna do it. So two of us said, yep, we'll do it. Me and the Tenere, we both did the water crossing. Here he is going up one of those large hills, making the turn. He said it got really loose up at the top and uh, a lot of loose sand, so I didn't try it up there. I just did the smaller one, but it's pretty awesome. He definitely had the right tires for this. He had knobbies on his. So the Norden did absolutely great crossing the water. Here I am crossing it. Um, first time and then I come back because the rest of the group decided they did not want to cross the water. Uh, it was a bit too scary for some of the members I think and they, are, they had brand new bikes they weren't as familiar enough with to give it a go yet. But here you can see the Norton did excellent in the water crossing. I only got my pant legs a little bit wet and my socks. This was a trail that we were taking. We were heading down to meet up with the Burr Trail switchbacks. Uh, this road went from paved to this dirt material but it had rained a ton and soon we found it was gonna to be too wet and slidey for the tires that most people had on their bikes. So here we are on the same road, headed back after we turned around. 
and the asphalt was certainly a much nicer course, even though it was still a little bit damp in places. Uh, it certainly paid off to have that rain jacket. It really stopped the wind and the rain. So this area here, there was a lot of loose sand. We were in a wash area for part of the trail. This posed a great problem for many of the riders. Um, me and the Tenera kind of blew through it quicker. He was well ahead of me. I couldn't keep up with him. And then of course we went out and did some more eating, got some pizza. It was just pretty incredible to go with eight friends on such a trip, so I highly recommend it. I stayed in a cabin when it was all over, loaded my bike back up on the trailer to head back home. Loved the trip. After getting home, washed the bike. I like this Tusk baggage. I was able to just pressure wash it off. So the bike is back home and survived the trip really well. I didn't have any incidents, uh, nothing happened. Like the rear shock did not start leaking. Everything worked really well. Uh, the only thing I noticed was that the bags certainly did rub on the shield that came with the bike. And they also rubbed some here on the shield on the exhaust and left a little bit of a mark. That's these soft bags over here. My favorite thing on the soft bags is probably this whole beaver tail at the back because you can throw stuff under it real easily like water bottles and stuff and carry. And also this quick grab, but that quick grab just gives you an area to put something and grab it real quickly. Other than that, I find it quite difficult to get into the side bags. You pretty much have to take your top bag off first to get in here and undo these, unroll it and pull things out of the side bags. So that's kind of the downfall. They're not as easy to access the inside of these bags. I hope you enjoyed this trip highlight video. Please subscribe to my channel and give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.